Uh, Jake Paul, I mean, as of right now, for what he's doing, it's good for what he's doing. But once he fights a real actual, real fighter, it, it's, it's going to be bad. Floyd Mayweather has joined the chorus of voices responding to Jake Paul's insensitive remarks about Mike Tyson's late daughter. Following suit with others, Mayweather has once more targeted Jake Paul, delving deep into questioning various aspects of his character. Beyond merely addressing Jake Paul, Mayweather has also directed criticism toward boxing authorities, scrutinizing many of their decisions and actions. Mayweather emphasizes the importance of excellence in training, fighting, and facilities, asserting that to be the best, one must have the best gym. He emphasizes that in his gym, they focus on their craft regardless of who else may be present, emphasizing a commitment to their own endeavors without causing harm to others. If one were to inquire about Jake Paul's most regrettable utterance, undoubtedly it would revolve around his ill-considered comment regarding burying Mike Tyson alongside his late daughter Exodus Tyson. Perhaps spoken in a fleeting moment of emotional disregard, the statement garnered swift and widespread condemnation. From all corners of the globe, voices clamored for retribution, with even Floyd Mayweather joining the chorus of critics. The lead-up to their impending bout has been fraught with controversy, spanning from the ferocity of their training regimes to the verbal exchanges and the precariousness of the match itself, which has faced numerous threats to its viability. Since its announcement, one glaring advantage for Mike Tyson was unmistakable. The match was unveiled on March 7th, just before the explosive showdown between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ninganu. From that moment, it cast a shadow over every other bout, dominating boxing headlines for weeks. Following the announcement, consequences seemed to lean in favor of Tyson against Jake Paul. Surprisingly, it wasn't solely due to Tyson's age advantage. Rather, it stemmed from the unequal circumstances surrounding the fight. Despite concerns about Tyson's age posing a significant disadvantage, the overwhelming support and backing from both fans and boxing professionals tilted the odds in his favor. Throughout his live sessions, interviews, tweets, posts, and messages, Mike Tyson has maintained an impeccable record. Not because he has refrained from making any mistakes, but rather because the stage seems to favor a seasoned legend who has graced the sport with unparalleled elegance and class. In contrast, his opponent appears to be an up-and-coming star whose time in the boxing arena may be short-lived. Tyson's enduring legacy has positioned him as the embodiment of correctness, while Jake Paul has consistently been painted in a negative light throughout this build-up. What's more disheartening is that Jake Paul fails to acknowledge his position as the underdog. Instead, he behaves as if he commands a universal fan base spanning across planets. His brazenness, insults, and cunning tactics have garnered attention, yet his recent disparagement aimed at Mike Tyson has unleashed a barrage of criticism upon him, and undoubtedly, more backlash awaits him in the days to come. Meanwhile, Floyd Mayweather seized the opportunity to voice his views during an interview, recounting a bizarre encounter he had with Paul. Mayweather expressed bewilderment at Paul's antics, denouncing them as juvenile and senseless. Mayweather asserted, There's no rationale in finding amusement and creating chaos. It's utterly nonsensical. Jake's behavior is simply juvenile. His comments are perhaps the most ludicrous I've heard in the realm of boxing. If he aims to leave a lasting mark on the sport, he's certainly taking the wrong approach. Mayweather expressed his doubts about continuing with the individual, lamenting the negative impact they've had on the sport. He likened boxing's current state to a mere spectacle for platforms like YouTube and Netflix, expressing his reluctance to proceed with such influence. He emphasized the lack of empathy displayed by the person, suggesting that if they were a father, they would understand the significance of protecting one's daughter. Mayweather advocated for authorities to intervene and penalize such behavior, stressing that there are boundaries and consequences regardless of the opponent's caliber. He concluded by criticizing the dysfunction within the Paul family, warning against reproducing without addressing underlying issues. Is he someone you're interested in or, or no? Well, you know, if you go back, um, you gotta uh, do your homework, look on the internet. I think he was doing, he was doing a sit down on a podcast one time and he talked about it. He said, um, I don't want to, I don't want to do an exhibition against Floyd Mayweather. But one thing I like about him, one thing I do like, like about him, he's, he's selling it, he's selling it and he's making good money and he's he's entertaining. I like it. In his remarks, Mayweather displayed a clear favoritism towards his daughter, particularly emphasizing the importance of her well-being and safety. 
His repeated focus on caring for the female child raised suspicions, especially when he suggested that Jake Paul couldn't empathize with a father's anguish over his daughter's suffering. Reflecting on events from 2020, one recalls an incident involving Mayweather's own daughter, Ayana Mayweather. Ayana, the daughter of renowned boxer Floyd Mayweather, pleaded guilty to a stabbing incident that year. In a Houston courtroom, the 23-year-old confessed to unlawfully and intentionally causing harm with a knife to LaPatra Lachey Jacobs. Reportedly, Mayweather stabbed Jacobs twice in the kitchen with two separate knives, resulting in Jacobs being hospitalized and Mayweather being subsequently arrested. Mayweather and Jacobs remained silent when asked for their comments. Jacobs also initiated legal action against Mayweather, citing physical pain, mental distress, bodily harm, medical expenses, loss of income, and disfigurement. The lawsuit aimed for unspecified compensation. In April 2020, Mayweather faced arrest following an altercation involving Jacobs and the rapper NBA Youngboy, who didn't provide an immediate response for comment. The circumstances leading to the altercation were unclear. NBA Youngboy, also known as Kentrell Deshaun Galden, had previous ties with both Mayweather and Jacobs, having children with them. In response to Jacob's lawsuit, NBA Youngboy's attorney stated that his client couldn't be held accountable for damages as Mayweather bore sole responsibility for the assault. Jacobs was hospitalized following the incident, as confirmed by Harris County Constable's Captain Jonathan Zitzman. Though her injuries were not life-threatening, she underwent surgery for treatment. At 19 years old, Mayweather found herself in custody at a Harris County jail. However, she swiftly posted a $330,000 bond and was freed the very same day. Although facing a second-degree felony charge, carrying a potential 20-year sentence, Mayweather opted for a plea deal with prosecutors. This agreement stipulated six years of deferred adjudication. How do you explain all that? How did that happen in your life? What well, things happen? You know, uh, you know, I had three children with a, a young lady. We wasn't seeing eye to eye, you know, we wasn't seeing eye to eye. You know, she was a little upset, had a little alcohol in her system. Schaffer expressed little concern regarding Jacob's civil suit against Mayweather, noting Mayweather's lack of significant assets would render any judgment uncollectible. He also emphasized NBA Youngboy's greater culpability despite Youngboy's denial of responsibility. Unbeknownst to Mayweather, Youngboy had harbored Miss Jacobs upstairs for days. As part of his plea agreement, Mayweather is legally prohibited from contacting Jacobs, who secured a protective order against Mayweather's daughter in December 2020. Additionally, Mayweather has been tasked with completing 40 hours of community service. This ordeal likely caused considerable distress for Floyd Mayweather, although it did not result in any fatalities. It likely provided Mayweather with a deeper understanding of Mike Tyson's anguish following the loss of his daughter. Beyond focusing on the dynamics between fathers and daughters, Mayweather also underscored the importance of conduct during face-offs in combat sports. Unlike many other sports, boxing involves intense face-to-face -face confrontations, making this aspect particularly significant. However, face-offs inject an extra layer of intrigue into fights, potentially spiking pay-per-view purchases. Yet these confrontations can escalate rapidly, sometimes resulting in physical altercations. Mayweather has urged authorities to closely monitor buildups and face-offs, implementing boundaries for fighters. Often verbal sparring consumes fighters, distracting them from other crucial aspects. Yet post-fight reactions frequently reveal a stark contrast. Despite exceptions, many boxers exhibit heightened respect and admiration for their opponents, a sentiment rarely witnessed during face-offs. Considering Mayweather's recommendations could be either heeded or disregarded, implementing boundaries might diminish the spontaneity and allure of face-offs. Yet, the introduction of boundaries would also foster greater coordination and organization within the sport. Mayweather likely proposed this idea after astutely noting certain hazardous trends throughout his 50 bouts, implicitly acknowledging the dynamics of 50 buildups and face-offs. The weight of Mayweather's perspective appears substantial enough to potentially provide the sport with the necessary revitalization that its fans have long yearned for. In the lead-up to Mayweather's ultimate showdown with Conor McGregor, a myriad of events unfolded, highlighting Mayweather's push for stricter regulations. Even before the bout began, the atmosphere crackled with anticipation, signaling that this face-off would etch itself into memory. Amidst the buzz, 
the UFC lightweight champion confidently took center stage at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, swaying to the music, eagerly awaiting Mayweather's arrival. The fucking fans can't fight for you. We not talking about being at the top. One year, two years, three years, four years, motherfucker. 21 years. During the inaugural leg of a four-day global media tour, anticipated to outshine even the entertainment and drama of their forthcoming pay-per-view boxing showdown in Las Vegas, McGregor, known for his audacity, swaggered onto the podium. With characteristic bravado, he declared, we've made it, baby. Moments later, he wasted no time in laying down his forecast. I'll knock him out within four rounds, mark my words. McGregor asserted confidently that his opponent would be rendered unconscious within the first four rounds, citing unparalleled movement, power, and ferocity yet to be experienced. At 28 years old, McGregor boasted an impressive track record, 24 bouts, 21 wins, and just three losses, with an impressive 18 of those victories ending in knockouts. McGregor's trademark wit shone through during the press conference, where he playfully taunted the 40-year-old Mayweather. However, it was Mayweather who emerged victorious in the verbal sparring, showcasing his seasoned experience. With 49 wins, zero losses, and 26 knockout victories under his belt, Mayweather's legacy was unparalleled. As they prepared to face off in the ring, Mayweather's mastery of traditional boxing rules left McGregor, a novice in the realm of boxing, at a disadvantage. This mirrored their verbal duel, where Mayweather's prowess again proved dominant. Inside the octagon, McGregor's knack for counterpunching was as natural as his comedic timing. Just as he outmaneuvered opponents with verbal jabs in the realm of comedy, he did the same inside the ring. However, the setting on Tuesday was vastly different from the chaotic UFC press conferences. It was a structured affair, following the rules of boxing. McGregor noted the contrast, humorously remarking on the newfound regulations. Despite not being informed beforehand, he delivered an impromptu opening statement, showcasing his spontaneous wit. Yet, when it was Mayweather's turn, McGregor's mic was muted, robbing him of his verbal prowess. At the climax, Mayweather unleashed a spirited tirade unlike any seen from him in years, injecting a gritty urban flair into the promotion of his fights. With a swaggering pace across the stage, he fired off a series of meticulously crafted one-liners, blending elements of his former pretty boy and money personas. It was akin to watching him engage in a rap battle. While his delivery may have bordered on cheesy, what truly mattered was his unshakable composure and evident enjoyment as he faced off against a rival equally adept in business acumen and psychological warfare. In the showdown between McGregor and Mayweather, the scales might have tipped in favor of the latter, much like they did in the boxing ring. Yet, McGregor, with an air of nonchalance, managed to stake his claim to victory. McGregor's performance was captivating, oozing charisma and confidence at every turn. However, their attire spoke volumes about the day's proceedings. McGregor strutted in, adorned in a lavish suit, ready for the grandest spectacle of his lifetime. That's your best friend I was in. You little fucking weasel. If there's ever a man that looks like a weasel, that's fucking it. You gonna do, you gonna stand up and do something? You sit down and shut your fucking mouth. What's with these two Jews heads you got? What the fuck was that yesterday? Meanwhile, Mayweather stood clad in a hat and sweatshirt, exuding an aura of seasoned familiarity. As the banter unfolded, McGregor took the initial jab at his adversary, humorously mocking Mayweather's attire. He's in a bloody tracksuit, can't even afford a proper suit anymore, McGregor quipped, leaving no room for ambiguity. Mayweather, unperturbed, was later queried about the significance of the number 21. With characteristic swagger, he retorted, I've still got it. 21 is the magic number. You ask why? That's how long I've been dominating. Whether it's a boxing ring or an octagon, put me in and I'll show you who's boss. When questioned about his adaptation to boxing rules, McGregor confidently remarked on his experience facing opponents who avoided direct confrontation. I'm not afraid of limitations, 
he asserted. McGregor couldn't help but chuckle at the plethora of regulations, seizing the opportunity to subtly boast about his skills. In contrast, Mayweather, while flaunting an uncashed check worth millions, boasted, even with alleged money troubles, I've still got a cool $100 million untouched. They can't even come close to that. At different junctures, Mayweather and McGregor have highlighted the disparity in the coordination of boxing face-offs compared to those in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. This discrepancy inherently elevates boxing over its rival sports. Yet, Mayweather's persistent call for enhancement in boxing's coordination and organization underscores a prevailing sentiment. While strides have been made, Mayweather contends there's still room for improvement. His stance isn't isolated. Other figures within the boxing community, spurred by events like the Tyson vs. Jake Paul bout, echo similar sentiments. They decry boxing authorities, accusing them of prioritizing financial gains over the integrity of the sport, thereby diminishing it from a pure athletic endeavor to mere spectacle for profit. Referencing the clash between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson, Oscar De La Hoya raised serious doubts about the logic behind such a matchup. He boldly asserted that many decisions in the realm of boxing are now primarily driven by financial gain rather than genuine sporting merit. Expressing his dismay, De La Hoya remarked, I truly don't comprehend the direction this sport is heading in. What we're witnessing today is a far cry from the noble art of boxing that characterized the 80s, 90s, and even the early 2000s. He proceeded to elaborate on how markedly different today's boxing landscape appears compared to decades past. In the past, boxing was revered as a sport, a form of entertainment where the focus was on the pugilistic prowess displayed in the ring. Financial gain was merely a secondary consideration, a reward for one's dedication to the craft. However, in the contemporary era, the tables have turned, with money taking precedence over the purity of the sport. De La Hoya lamented, nowadays it's all about the financial bottom line. Boxing has regrettably been relegated to a mere commodity in the market of financial rewards. We owe it to ourselves to strive for something better. Additionally, Canelo Alvarez has added his voice to the growing number of critics disparaging the fight. In a discussion with TMZ, he indicated his lack of enthusiasm for watching the match, stating his opinion that it's leaning more toward entertainment rather than authentic boxing. Canelo noted that while he recognizes the upside of Netflix's participation, he doesn't see it as advantageous for such fights, viewing them as more spectacle than real competition. On a separate occasion, Canelo outright rejected the concept of a Tyson versus Paul bout. Moreover, MMA reporter Ariel Helwani has recently provided details about the rules for the upcoming boxing match. Helwani confirmed that the current consensus is that the bout will be officially sanctioned as a professional fight. He also commented on the criticism surrounding the Paul versus Tyson matchup, pointing out that many who previously questioned Paul's credibility are now showing worry for Tyson's safety. In addition, Helwani pointed out the inconsistency in this viewpoint, emphasizing that fans cannot both mock Jake Paul for not being at a certain skill level and also express concern that he might defeat Mike Tyson. Helwani challenged the logic of simultaneously criticizing someone for their lack of skill and questioning their fitness to compete, while also expressing concern that the same individual could pose a threat to a 57-year-old man. He underscored the contradiction in labeling someone as both a bum and a formidable opponent, stressing that it's inconsistent to both underestimate a fighter's abilities and worry about their opponent's safety when facing them. The classification of the match as either an exhibition or a professional fight is entirely dependent on the decision of the combative sports program within the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Brian E. Francis, the interim executive director of TDLR, will make the final determination based on feedback from the program's staff. Tela Mange, the communications manager at TDLR, explained, it's quite common for a promoter to request a date several months in advance without immediately providing the proposed fight card. They aim to confirm the date with us first, as we need to ensure we have adequate staffing for any event. Mange stated that the promoter must submit proposed fight cards before a decision can be reached on whether a specific contest will be classified as an exhibition or a professional fight. Moreover, the format of a proposed exhibition would also be assessed based on the plans submitted. Mange further commented, the promoter is required to provide proposed fight cards prior to our determination of whether a contest will be categorized as an exhibition or a professional fight. 
and to establish the structure of a proposed exhibition. Given Tyson's extensive experience in the boxing ring compared to Paul's limited exposure, the matchup might be seen as unsuitable for a professional setting. The situation becomes more intricate with Tyson's age being 57 at the time of the match, requiring strict adherence to EEG and ECG tests for fighters age 36 and above. These evaluations are crucial as they assess both brain and heart function, which is especially important considering Tyson's previous head injuries and potential age-related cardiovascular concerns. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. Thanks.